Greetings. I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another, you got it, Hobo Cagnos product review. Today we have the Suoki 100 watt folding portable solar panel. And if it looks a little worse for wear, it's because I've been beating the crap out of it in the desert for the last two months. So is it any good? Has it held up to the test of time? Let's find out. So let's check this thing out and see what it comes with. Here's how it comes in the box. I'm not gonna show you the box because it's unnecessary. It has this Velcro pocket on the back that holds all the goodies inside. First, you get, oddly, a pair of battery jumper cables. You plug this into the solar panel, you hook this to a battery, and you fry it. That's right. I don't know whose idea it was to include jumper cables with this solar panel. Now, if you know what you're doing, and you have a dead lead acid battery, you could actually use a solar panel to directly charge a battery, but only up to about 15 volts. Beyond that, you're gonna fry your battery. So I don't recommend using these clamps unless you actually know what you're doing. You also get an Anderson adapter cable. So this plugs into the solar panel side and this goes into whatever Anderson power pole that you wanna use. Now the new Jackery comes with this and the new Suoki 400 watt hour power station comes with Anderson inputs. A lot of power stations now are coming with these inputs. So it's pretty cool that I'm gonna include this cable. You also get this direct five millimeter adapter cable, which basically this is for hooking it up to other power stations that only have a 5.5 millimeter input. There's a lot of them out there. And finally, you get these adapters. So you can use this five millimeter adapter and plug it into any of these other adapters and basically allows you to convert from everything from the eight millimeter that you use for jackeries all the way down to various laptop cords, um, different adapters for different companies. So very nice. Inside you have the regular DC 18 volt output. You have a USB-C power delivery port. You have a fast charge USB-A port and a regular USB 5 volt port. So you can actually directly charge just about any device right off the solar panel. And for those of you that are interested, here are the specifications of the Suoki 100 watt portable panel. Let's review some of the other features of the Suoki. Now bear in mind, this has been on the ground in the desert for over two months. So you're gonna see a little wear and tear here. First, unlike other brands, Suoki actually uses Velcro to keep their panel shut. They don't use straps, they don't use magnets, they use Velcro. And again, a lot like other panels, this is a four section panel. So these are 25 watts each, and there are four of them, making this panel pretty long. Just how long? this long. And in order to hold these four panels up, each panel has its own Velcro leg. There is a problem with this though. As you can see right here, this one tore. They basically use this really low end thin ribbon to hold it on. And when there was some wind, it tore it right off. Now it doesn't affect the solar panel itself or the way it charges, but now, when you set this thing up, the leg can go like that. You just have to be careful setting it up after these tear. Now, this didn't just happen once. It also happened over here on this one. So two of the four legs on this ripped in two months. Now, as you can see, it doesn't affect how it stands up. It still has no problem standing up, even though the legs on the back are torn. Now, granted, I was using this in the desert in some pretty high wind conditions. So I was using rocks to hold the legs down. That's typical, I do that with all my solar panels. I usually use rocks or firewood or tent pegs or something to hold the legs down. Well, the wind was strong enough to push this forward and actually rip two of the four legs off. Now there's one other thing I discovered in my testing this thing in the desert for the last two months and that this little flap that they use to hold the thing together is a real nuisance because as soon as the wind blows, it covers up the solar panel and then it stops charging. Now you might think I'm not gonna recommend this at all because of the flaws that it has, but that's not the case because this is actually a very good solar panel. It's very efficient. I use this to charge the Suoki G1000 and a Jackery and several other power stations. And in fact, I ran this in series to power my van. 
So it's very versatile. And look at the condition of the panels after two months being in the desert. Now I left this out in the wind, in the rain, it got blasted by sand, it fell over a whole bunch of times. Look at the quality of the panels. Look how well they've withstood the test of time. The panels don't have a single scratch after falling over a whole bunch of times in the desert, getting dirty, getting rained on. It works perfectly. And that says something about the quality of the panels themselves. Now there is something else about this panel that I find very curious. There are no eyelets on this side of the panel at all. It's not designed to be hung up horizontally. It's designed to be hung vertically because the grommets are all on this flap. So it's only designed to be hung up like this. That's not gonna do you any good in the summertime. You're gonna have to lay it on the ground where somebody's stepping on it. It's not really an easy way at all to use magnets or bungees or anything like that to hook it to the side of your rig or put it in a position except on the ground using the legs. I find that very odd that they did not include any grommets in this side of the panel. So how does this panel perform in the real world? Let's look at some tests. So here's how I have the panel set up. They're pointed directly at the sun. You can see from this angle, they're directly from the sun. You an idea what the sky conditions look like. There's the sun, about 45 degrees or so. There is a haze. I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera, but there's actually a haze in the sky and it is affecting solar here. We do have some wispy clouds. There is a storm rolling in. So this is under pretty much average conditions here in Arizona. It is now early March and it is around 1, 1.30 in the afternoon. This is about the best I can do. I did hit 70 watts several times, 72 watts several times, but as the panels heat up, they become a little less efficient. I'm pulling 68 watts right now, 4.6 amps, 14.8 volts. Here we have the 100 watt panel plugged into the Suoki 400 watt hour power station. And you can see on the input meter, we're getting about 60 watts. So that is an accurate measurement according to my other tests. And yes, I will be reviewing this power station pretty soon. I'm gonna be curious if this works at all with the Blue Eddy because the Blue Eddy does not like anything under 16 volts. It's not working very well. Let's see, we got 33 watts. We're getting something, but only half of what it's producing. Now it says DC 16 to 60 volts. The fact that this puts out maximum power around 15 to 16 volts means you do not wanna buy the Suoki 100 watt panel if you're gonna use it to charge a Max Oak Blue Eddy. I figure I better cover these battery clamps that come with the Suoki 100 watt panel before I get flamed in the comments about overcharging batteries. Now, this is a mildly discharged older battery. It's, uh, it was sitting at around 12.4 volts when I hooked it up. See right now it's at 13.42. Now that seems perfectly fine. And that is perfectly fine. It is charging slowly at a lower voltage. However, when this battery gets topped up, the voltage that this panel's putting out is gonna to totally wreck it. Because this will go way over 15 volts by the time this battery's charged. And lead acid batteries generally don't like to be charged more than 15, 15 and a half volts. And that's even during its desulfation phase. You're really only supposed to charge them about 14, 6, 14, 8. Now let me show you the open circuit voltage of this panel right now. Without the battery connected, the open circuit voltage is 20 volts right now. So that means once this battery reaches its basically topped up state, this is gonna keep charging it up to 20 volts and that would basically destroy this battery. It would off gas it, boil off the fluid inside, could possibly crack the case. So just be aware if you do buy this panel and use these battery cables, keep a very close eye on your battery voltage. Once it goes above 14.6, 14.8, disconnect the cables. So what do I think about the Suoki 100 watt folding solar panel? Well, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. One of the interesting features about this solar panel I haven't seen on other solar panels yet is that it does have that 60 watt power delivery port. Now it's only gonna give you 60 watts if you're getting probably 70 or 80 watts of sun. So you're gonna have to put this thing out on a very sunny clear day if you're gonna charge a device that requires that 60 watts. So for charging devices directly, this panel is actually pretty good. Now as for pricing, with current Hobo Tech discount and the coupon on Amazon, this comes in at under $180, which isn't bad at all. It's actually a pretty good deal. 
There's a lot of competition in this marketplace right now, and they're all trying to do a little different designs to be ahead of the game. Now, one of the cool things about Suoki is that they do offer a 24-month warranty. So if I would have bought this panel myself, which I didn't, they gave this to me for free to do a review on it. But if I would have bought it and I would have had a problem with the legs tearing, I could have just sent it back and they probably would have sent me a new one, hopefully with an updated leg system. But this actually withstood some pretty harsh conditions in the desert. You can see the cloth still looks pretty good. There's no tears or rips in the cloth itself. It is water resistant. Now, they don't claim any kind of water resistance or waterproofing on the website, but I run all my solar panels in the rain because it rains a lot out here in the desert. Believe it or not, there are many days where I get like a little bit of rain at a time and you're not gonna run out and bring your solar panel in. You're just gonna let the rain pass and then wait till the sun comes back out and re recharge your devices. One of the important things about keeping these things from being damaged in the rain is to keep these flaps folded. Now, almost all these solar panels have some kind of pocket or bag that can be zip closed or Velcroed shut. And the key is to run the cables out through the corners to your device, which your device obviously you want to keep inside out of the weather. But this keeps most of the moisture and everything out of the important ports on the solar panel. So I'm not claiming this thing is waterproof or water resistant by any means, neither does the manufacturer. All I'm saying is that I use all of these panels in the rain and so far I haven't had any issues. Now I did test this with the Suoki S200 and the new 400 watt portable power stations. It performs just fine. I've got pretty much 80 to 85 watts on peak solar days. And in most cases, it's been pretty overcast, really cloudy the last couple of weeks, a lot of wind. I've really only been able to get tests on camera around 65 to 70 watts, but that's the name of the game. When you're dealing with the weather, you're at the weather's mercy for testing. And I basically can't wait any longer to get this video out. So what you see is what you get. That's the downside to solar and relying on solar. So you might have days or even a week where it's going to be cloudy. You're not going to get perfect conditions to have perfect power out of these panels. That's why you should always have a backup system like a generator or some other way to get power. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. And don't forget to look below in the description for the special Hobo Tech code to get a discount on this panel. Now, I said it's under $180 today, but if you watch this video three months from now, that code might not work anymore or it might be a different discount. Just be aware that things change over time. If the code doesn't work, it's probably expired. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin. Barbie Gold Gun Hat. <laughs>